Yeah, I tested it. I tested the little Nikon that could. It couldn't. That's all I know. It couldn't. I set out to see how the Nikon Z6 compared to the Fuji X-T3 from a micro four thirds loser vantage point. My fastest lens is an f2 now. A micro four thirds SF4. I get the blurry background of a fourth grader. I should be in high school or college, but I'm not. So today we battle APS-C versus full frame. Is Fuji enough? Have they done enough? Can Nikon autofocus? Can it keep up with the loser little Canon RP? Some shocking conclusions to come, my friend. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So before we get started, you should know that we're filming at a shutter speed of 1 40th as a sideshow experiment in my circus freak show of a life. We'll see what happens. 30p at 1 40th. How's that? If someone were to challenge me. Oh. Mm. He was resilient, that guy. So we're on a fucking Minolta lens here. That's what we've slid down to. And I want to upgrade. I want some autofocus. The camera is 15 feet away from me. I can't even barely see that external monitor. Look, this is me reaching out. I would need 15 hands to reach you. So I've concluded that I want a wider angle lens, but I still want my blurry background. I want my cake and to eat it too. What a dumb say, who buys a cake and doesn't eat it? What do you have the cake for? Oh, I wish I could eat that thing. You bought it, just eat it, you fat master. <laughs> master? It's so funny, we create this world, I don't care what anybody says. This may be hippie shit, but I believe we create the world with our thoughts. And I was getting sick of fo manually focusing with a 50mm lens, and I was focusing on that. Now I have to focus from twice the distance. It's even harder. I created that, and I admit it. Let's get into the footage. Nobody cares about this. So first I'm going to show you two clips. One Fuji X-T3 with the 16mm 1.4 on a tripod, and we're testing the autofocus, moving in and out of frame. Can I do my rule of third shit? Can we do it? And then the Nikon with the Z lens, 35mm 1.8, also on a tripod, moving out of the frame, can it keep up with me? So we'll do the autofocus test first, and then we'll do the handheld stabilization test. Can Nikon hang with the likes of Panasonic? Why are you even trying? Oh, why, hello to you, face tracking. <laughs> Fuji X-T3, 16mm f1.4, dare it track my life. I feel like it lost me there. It lost you a little bit. So Fuji won't let me do my rule of third shit. Is that recording? Yep. So it doesn't show on my screen. But we are recording? Yes, we are. All right. Nikon Z6 or Z6. And a 35mm f1.8. Are you tracking? Oh, it lost me for a split second. How dare you, Nikon? It's more flexible. Oh. Uh, All right. Nice 50 is really good at that range, but it's more like it's interface. Oh. Very smooth, Mr. Nikon. So how did I look on the Fuji? I forget if I had my police sign in the frame. I wanted to compare them side by side. The Fuji versus the Nikon. What's more fantastic? Which background is blurrier? That's <laughs> not fair. Come on, Fuji. Where's your 1.1 lenses, Fuji? That's fantastic. And it's wide open lens. Was it that two or two eight? Mm -hmm. Slow knee tracking. Every sit I've ever had showing up on camera. How dare you? Oh. Okay, cool. Um, I, I'm going to use that one, but I'll give you just because I'm obviously going to do it. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Try with the eye autofocus too, as well. This is just the face. Cool. So, how does that look, everybody? 1080p? So, from those tests, I'm really not confident in either system for the autofocus. They're not on the Sony and Canon level, either of them. 
Fuji is probably worse. I would give the edge to Nikon. It seemed to be smoother in the focusing. It held me longer. I could move around more, but it seemed like right away the Nikon lost me, just going like side to side. I was three feet from the camera. Why'd you lose me, Nikon? We went for a walk in the woods and you lost me. I cry when I get lost. Do you want that? That's on you. You were responsible for my life and you lost me. You left me in the woods. What am I gonna do for food? You know I get scared of lions and shit. You didn't think of that, did you? So after testing all the current modern mirrorless releases, I have concluded Canon dual pixel autofocus is still king. I thought Sony overtook them until I tried it myself and I saw the smoothness of it. It's just smoother, like skin, when you rub lard into it. Do you do that? So Canon is still king monkey at autofocus. Next would be Sony. Definitely a7 III, a9, beautiful, just beautiful, just not quite. Pretty much usable, never loses you. Zero complaints on it. It's just if you're nitpicking shit, just slightly nicer to look at. So Canon, Sony, I would throw Nikon in that third spot. They're close. They're a couple firmware updates away from being with the big boys, getting to eat bananas at the monkey table of life. They're not there yet. Close. Then Fuji, which I will say this, Fuji could supersede Nikon's abilities with the right lens. With that 16mm 1.4, it wasn't hacking it because it's a stupid stepping motor bullshit lens. It's bullshit. Actually, stepping motor's the good kind for Fuji. I know nothing of the world. Then I guess you throw Olympus and Panasonic in a dungeon to fight for the biggest loser on the planet when it comes to autofocus. But Panasonic can at least app to tap. Just boom, lock it, then you're good to go. If you don't have a manual focus lens like an idiot, so next we do a little stabilization test. I tried to be as stable as possible on that Fuji that has no IBIS or lens stabilization. And we just, is it possible to hold it and walk like a ninja on a cloud? Can that happen? Versus the Nikon, and I will fully admit this, I don't know what the hell happened to the Nikon settings. This is the problem. I go into a camera shop and I'm nervous. These camera guys are looking at me. I'm first, I feel like I'm stealing. It's like, oh, can I use your camera and put my card in and take the files away? Like, I feel like I'm a criminal of the night and I'm wasting their time. And I just, there's pressure on me. As soon as I get in that shop, I want to be out as quick as possible and not waste anybody's time. And these menu systems are all new to me. So I always mess something up. Like when I did the Canon RP versus the R, I didn't know that Canon had two auto white balance modes. How stupid is that? It's probably beneficial, but goddamn. So it was, the R was probably in ambient mode. So it looked like I was filming on Mars, but I wasn't. I was on Earth. There's not even camera shops on Mars yet. Why would you think I was on Mars? Be realistic. What's wrong with you? So I was playing around with the Nikon Z6 and I forgot to even look at the stabilization settings. So something was up with this. I don't know if digital stabilization was on or like it wasn't set to the proper focal length. It should have done that automatically with the Z lens, but the fact that Nikon is even capable of producing footage like this is embarrassing. Like it's a setting. Like, do you want us to do this? Like what the hell were y'all thinking? Did you have a boardroom meeting about it? I think they did. All right, fellas, Ibis, that's the name of the game these days. We gotta put it in our camera's full frame. I know it's tough. That sensor, that's a big one, but we could do it. We could do it, right? Yeah, we we could do that. Just how smooth do you need it to be though? Just asking. I want it to be like a gimbal, but like if a gimbal was on a gimbal. Can we do that? You're asking a lot, Larry. We've never done it before. I'm not sure we can even build the mechanism. You want it gimbal on gimbal like? Is that realistic? God damn it, Kenneth, shoot for the stars. Maybe we'll land on the moon. I don't have all the answers in life. We'll do our best, but as a failsafe, 
we could add digital stabilization to crop and move it. And we have the algorithms, I believe, that it'll follow it with a nice jerky motion from side to side, and then up and down whenever you pan and tilt. So we'll throw that in. Good, sounds like a plan. All right, just a little control test with the Mitocon. We're on the Mitocon, your favorite lens in the history of the universe. The stabilization so glorious. Zero stabilization. Yeah. Oh. Be smooth. Be smooth. Keep me. Is it the smoothest footage you've ever seen? Is it glorious? Okay. Nikon. Stabilization. I'll try to walk as carefully as I was with the Fuji. This is the 35 version. And then we'll test her out. I feel like I'm not in the rule of thirds. What's happening right now? There we go. There we go. How's that Nikon stabilization? We'll do a little walk. 35 mil. Ruling of thirds so hard right now. It's fantastic. Yeah, that one is 20. Is there any jittery shit going on? Is it smooth as butter? I keep forgetting my rule of thirds. It's heavy. It's a little heavy. Autofocus gets me though. You understand me, Nikon. It's a fantastic little camera. I'm trying so hard. You have to do it like that. Don't knock anything over. So I'm sorry. User error on that one. Just I've never seen Nikon footage look that shaky and jerky. and Like I didn't even know they could do that. Moving the frame like four feet at a time. How does the IBIS mechanism's only that big? It can only do minor things, but the image, when expanded, worlds are moved. Nikon 20 mil f 1.8. Is this the, oh my God, it looks so glorious. Oh my God, it's heavy. We're adapting the glass. Can it keep up with me? I hear that autofocus motor. It sounds like a car driving it little dwarves they're driving it to work wow it looks stable in the shot blurry background camera workers they're so blurry but they still do a great job here at Henry's come shop at Henry's Superstore you're not gonna come how are those preamps that's heavy that's a heavy lens Okay. Was the Nikon close? That 20 mil, I'm excited. Once Nikon releases that 20 mil f1.8 for the Z mount, look out, look out. It's game over for you guys. <laughs> I like to think I could get better results with it if I practice a bit, but for the first time rookie trying it, that was terrible. Absolutely terrible. But I will say this, that 20 mil f1.8 was fantastic. I can't wait for them to come out with that for the Z lens. That'll be phenomenal. That would be the ultimate vlogging if the stabilization works well. Because whatever that was, was not well. That was sickly old man stabilization with arthritis. Like bowel lesions. That's what happened. Here's the bottom line here. When it comes to Fuji, they need to update their lens lineups. I made the video about it. Until they make lenses with perfectly smooth video autofocus, their whole system is held back from their technology in the body. They ain't syncing up. So Fuji has to work on that, and I don't like the direction they're going with their lenses. They're coming out with these giant, massive, and they're not even that fast. That 8 to 16 2.8, it's like, oh yay. 2.8 on an APS-C, f4, f4.2. So Fuji has the potential to be good in like four years once they update all their lenses, but will they do it? I don't know that they will. So I don't hold a lot of hope for Fuji, but Nikon, they're closer to success. They have some interesting lenses on the way. That 20mm f1.8, if that comes out and it's stabilized, you could handhold your life. And just having it as a like a table cam right to you, the Nikon preamps would be overpassed 
by the closeness proximity of the microphone to your mouth. The closer you get to the microphone, the better it sounds. I mean, let's be real here. This is Nikon's first attempt, and it's almost good. It is almost good. It's rivaling the a7 III, just it's not quite there. And this, the image looked a little over-sharpened. You'd have to play with the settings, but every pore in my face, every single pore, it's like, is that what you wanted? You want to blow up your pores? I don't think so. But thank you for the offer. The reality is, though, Full frame is magic, and if you go with anything less, you're a scrub. You're a scrub in the forest, trying to gather together some twigs for a fire. You know that thing ain't gonna stay lit, not all night. You're gonna be sleeping under a bed of leaves, freezing, if you don't get full frame. So I think I'll do a video soon on what I would choose right now, after having tested everything. Canon's top cameras for mirrorless, Sony, Nikon, now Fuji still using the Panasonic. What would I choose right now if I was just starting out? It could be interesting because I've learned things. You learn when you use. I just have opinions of other people shooting so far, but when I get to use it, then I see the real truth. They're lying to you, everybody. Don't trust them. <laughs> so let me know what you thought of the Nikon Z Loser 6 down below and the Fuji X-T3, which was better. I do like that 24 mil range. I would have bought the Canon RP if they had a 24mm f1.4. Probably the R though, I think I'd rather have the R. The RP is just too crippled. Canon's cripple hammer just smashed that thing. They, they didn't even leave any pieces. There was no evidence of the smash. It wasn't even cut on film, it was too swift and heavy. So We're left with the pieces of our life. Oh, you can pick it up. If they can pick it up, you can pick it up. Whatever your struggle is right now, you can overcome it. Haven't you been through a lot already? You're still here. Nothing can knock you down. Look at you. You're so resilient. I believe in you. Believe in yourself. <laughs> Alright, we're done. Thank you so much for watching today. Affiliate links down below for everything. Buy them. Even if you don't need the camera. They, they make good gifts. Camera systems. Just cheap, affordable gifts. So, consider it. Subscribe for more videos and we'll see you in the next one.